Hi, this is Jimmy at uh, No Plum 99, um, commenting on part 5 of Sean's Evolution Series, uh, Van and Fang X's Evolution Series. Um, he's banging these buggers out faster than I can keep up with them, unfortunately, uh, so I've missed out. Uh, well, I did a little bit of response to part of his number 3. I've missed out number 4, and I've gone on to number 5. Number 5 deals with Noah's Ark, uh, the physicalities of the Ark, and it deals with... Um, it deals with what he took on the arc, and then he makes some comments on evolution and, and being able to prove evolution. Okay, let's. I, I really want to deal with these arc things um, primarily. I've got to fit this into ten minutes. Um, and, and the problem is, it's very easy to make um, a spurious claim. You can make a spurious claim within a few seconds, but it takes it takes quite a lot longer to refute it. So to be able to respond to a ten minute video within a ten minute video is not a very easy thing to do. So anyway, let's go on about this arc. He talks about this wooden boat. I'd like everybody to actually do some research. You can do it on the internet into large wooden boats and how big you can get a wooden boat. Um, look at the technology they had available at the time and, and decide for yourself whether they could make a boat this large. I can tell you that nowadays we couldn't make a wooden boat this large. We've never made a wooden, successfully made a wooden boat this large. The, the largest wooden boats we've had are, are along this kind of size, but they've had a large amounts of, of um, metal strapping and, and metal superstructure to hold the wooden frame together because when you make a wooden boat of a certain size, as it tends to bend and flex, it tends to take on a lot of water and it tends to be, to be uh, it's just not rigid enough. It's just not strong enough, um, and this is a, this is a problem. This is why we don't make huge wooden boats. It's primarily, uh, we make them out of out of steel. Um, now, what he's doing is with much simpler technology. He's assuming that he can make this large wooden boat. Well, let's say he makes this large wooden boat. Well, okay, if he's having this large wooden boat, this huge arc um, on a mill pond, you know, that's 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 like glass still then he might have a chance, but he hasn't got that. In actual fact, I mean, if you've ever seen, watch the film Perfect Storm, and you see that huge wave that that, that destroys the, the boat at the end of the film, that kind of wave isn't doesn't even enter into it. The kind of waves you're going to be talking about are going to be ten times that size, because what he's already told us in one of his earlier videos is that all the mountains that we see, all this all this relief, all this topography we see now, no, no, that all, that all happened during the flood. There was a, it was a huge period of geological activity, and... Um, and as the water came out from the deep, so you can have this huge hydraulic action, you can have water water spewing out from the deep, uh, you've got this fantastic rainfall, the kind of which you'd never see uh, nowadays landing in the boat, and, uh, and you've got this fantastic geological activity. You know, you get an earthquake, you get a, a tectonic plate moves a, moves a foot, moves a yard, and you get a huge earthquake nowadays. You imagine when you've got, you know, mountains that are, that are as high as Mount Everest, what, 29,000 feet high. These mountains are rising up. And imagine the amount of volcanic activity, imagine the amount of ash that's going to be in the air. Um, the whole sun's going to be obscured because of the amount of ash that's in the air. Um, imagine all the sulfur and all the gases that's going to be in the air because of this huge period of volcanic activity. This boat is really going to struggle to cope. I mean, as it is, the biggest wooden boats that have ever been made, um, they, need, they require a large amount of pumping to constantly pump out the water that they're taking on. Um, I can't see this boat surviving more than possibly, if it, if it does really well, it may survive a second. Um, how it's going to survive 40 days and 40 nights, or is it 120 days or whatever, before all the water's eventually clear, the mind boggles. Something else to understand with the arc is the idea of what you take on the arc. We'll come to the animals in a minute, but often it's made out that the fish don't need to come on the arc. Um, because they can just survive in the water. Nothing is going to survive in the water. You know, it's not nice mill pond still water. If I take a fish and I put it in this glass and I shake this glass and I shake this glass viciously, viciously, and then and then uh, you know, imagine this was actually instead of being made out of uh, instead of this glass being made out of glass, it was made out of plastic. And then I start throwing, throwing it at the wall. The fish isn't going to survive in there. Uh, the fish are not going to survive in this water because I've told you about the amount of turmoil. Imagine the amount of chemicals that are going to spew uh, from all this volcanic activity into the water. The freshwater fish aren't going to survive in the salt water. Uh, and uh, none of the fish are really going to survive. No, no aquatic life is going to be able to, apart from the very simplest things, are going to be able to deal with all this that's going on. So everything is going to have to be on the art. The art's going to be matchwood within a second. Um, he's got a problem already on his hands. But let's look at the animals he's actually taking on the arc, right? Well, 
Okay, what you could do is you could take one of every species. That would be the sensible thing to do. Um, because given that you're making an arc that's too big to, uh, to survive anyway, you may as well make the arc 100 times that size. Um, given it's unfeasible, it might as well be more unfeasible. So you may as well make the totally unfeasible sized arc and just take every creature on it. But he doesn't do that. No, no, he says, what we're going to do is going to take one of every kind. He then says he's going to, Sean says, well, I'll define kind. He doesn't really define kind. He's still quite murky about it. But we have a kind of idea, we have a kind of idea what he's talking about. And uh, so what you have to understand is that, that people like Sean, and, and he believes in microevolution. Now, the reason he believes in microevolution is because Kent Hovind believes in microevolution. And what basically they mean by microevolution is, is that they accept that Within a population, a population, a, a, a population of species has genetic diversity. Some species have a lot more genetic diversity than others. Cheetahs and human beings don't have that much genetic diversity. Some other species, rats, have a lot more genetic diversity. Uh, so, so within that population, then you can select for the different alleles, the different versions of the same gene. This is why, when he looks at these dogs. Um, and he talks about where different breeds of domesticated dogs have come from. You know, we used to think, scientists used to think, that they probably came from two or three wild dog types. We now know, due to being able to look at the genetics of these dogs, that they actually all, all come from the wolf. Um, but wolves have a large genetic diversity within their populations, so it's been possible for human beings to selectively breed the wolves. But you can't do that if you've only got two wolves. If you've only got two wolves, well... For each gene, the, the male wolf has got two versions, two alleles. The female version has got two alleles. Possibly. Maximum. Four. Okay? There might not be four. There might only be one. Because they may... Um, each, each... The male and female wolf might carry two versions that are exactly the same and exactly the same as each other. But there's a maximum of four uh, for any possible gene. There is not a lot of genetic diversity from which uh, to choose from once you've got the other side of the flood. The only way then for these wolves to have been bred into all these different dogs is for actually some pretty spectacular uh, and successful evolution to take place. The kind of evolution which no, uh, n no biologist, nobody who subscribes to evolutionary theory would accept is possible. Um, in some ways, Sean is more of an evolutionist than the evolutionist because he claims that this evolution can work so fast and it can come up with new mutations, new positive, successful mutations very, very quickly. In fact, within a few thousand years, one kind can come up with enough new mutations to create all these different species. Um, he mu well, he doesn't. The thing is, he doesn't believe that, but from what he says, he can't get away from that. Um, because of the nature of what he says. So really this blows some really rather large holes into his art story. Um, we, we could go on and look, look at lots and lots of other aspects of, of the art story and uh, you know we could for example race people people around the world are, are, are of different skin colors um, have different body shapes. Um, all these have all but all these people have come from Noah and his family. And all these have, have, have happened in just a few thousand years. Um, that's really not possible to have happened in 4,000, 5,000 years. It's just not possible to have happened. Um, for, for, that, for, for those kind of mutation rates uh, that will be necessary for that kind of thing to happen. I, I, I'm, I'm, what, what I really like about Sean's video is he talks about, he shows he points, he's quite good, he does do good video, Sean, and he points to his, um, he points to his annotations. Click on these annotations. What he says is, you know, make sure you're looking at the genuine Venom Fang X channel. Check it spelt like, check you're watching the genuine Venom Fang X channel, otherwise you won't be able to click on these annotations. You also need to make sure you're viewing the genuine Venom Fang X channel, because if you're not viewing the Venom Fang X channel, it may be possible for you to uh, make a comment on his video without it being censored and doctored. Um, so if you want to make sure that all your comments that you make on this video are censored and any negative comments are disregarded, make sure you're on the genuine Venom Fang X channel.